Hi guys, welcome back. Today I have a back workout for all of you who are looking to shred your backs. Now that we are going to keep the rest very minimal in between sets. And then we also have quite a few exercises going on in this workout. So it's really going to help keep that heart rate up. You're really going to get a nice sweat and burn going from this workout while also building and toning your backs at the same time. Win-win situation, I know. So first off, I'm starting off showing you guys the warm-up that I did. Now, usually for back, if you guys have seen any of my other workout videos, for back, I usually warm up with different variations of chin-ups and pull-ups, but today I was just not feeling it. So I decided to instead do something like this. Now, when it comes to your warm-up or you're doing your dynamic stretching, you want to keep the weight to no weight to as minimal weight as possible, which is why I'm using a light resistance band for this. But if you don't have a light resistance band and you're in your gym, you can go ahead and use the cable machine and just set it to as high as it can go so it's above you. Go on your knees and then go ahead and just set the weight to as light as it can possibly go. You just don't want to pre-exhaust your muscles. You want to do just enough to get your back nice and activated and get the blood flow rushing to the parts of your back that we are going to be training. So that way you can help prevent injuries and just get the most out of your lifts as possible as far as mobility and weight you can lift and all that jazz. Now, this is not including my warm-up before this. Like as far as I like to walk on the treadmill and do a few different stretches before I get into like my more dynamic and um, warm up sets and things like that as you're seeing right here is the best way to explain it but I did just want to add this in there because I know everybody kind of has their own little thing they like to do when they go in the gym as far as whether it's going on the elliptical or the treadmill you know just to get the blood flowing throughout your body and just get your muscles nice and warmed up so I just kind of left that out and just wanted to show you guys the main key warm up things I did since I did not start off my workout with pull-ups or chin-ups like I typically do on back workout days like you guys have seen before. Now moving into the actual working sets, we're going to start off with the wide grip lat pull downs. Four sets, 15 reps. You're going to be doing a wide hold. Typically the bar you are holding onto will have a bend and that's typically where you will want to grab at and do an overhand hold. Make sure when you're allowing that weight to go up, you're allowing it to stretch your lat completely to get full range of motion. And then as you are bringing it down towards your chest, you are really squeezing your lats together nice and tight and then slowly releasing it back up and then back down. And you're only doing that for four sets of 15 reps. Next exercise is going to be bent over dumbbell rows. So you're going to have a decent bend in your knee. You're going to keep your back as flat as possible to keep that spine neutral. You don't want to be arching your back to where your butt's sticking out and you don't want to be hunching over. The only time it'll, it'll look like it appears as if I'm rolling my shoulders forward and that is because I'm allowing those dumbbells to hang in front of me to get a full stretch in my lat, but I'm still keeping my chest upright. I'm not actually curving my back over. As you guys can see from looking at my actual um, backside, you guys can see that is a flat slant. So I just wanted to let you guys know um, the best way to protect your back, especially in standing back exercises as such, is to keep your core as tight as possible. So I just wanted to add this angle in there just to show you guys a little bit better from a different position um, is that you guys can see I have that weight hanging in front of me to allow me to get a full stretch in my lat, but I'm still keeping my chest upright. I'm not actually bending over because if I was, you would not be able to even see my chest in this shot.
Rolling over into the next exercise is going to be some lower back extensions and then dropping into some quarter pulses. And you're just doing two sets of 15 reps of each exercise um, per set. And that is all you need with the amount of contact and tension you get from this exercise. Trust me on that one. But I do want to point out that I do only keep my toes on the machine when I do this exercise with a decent bend in my knee. And I do this purposely for myself personally, because I get major contact in my hamstrings when I do this exercise. So I find that by only keeping my toes on those baseboards and a greater bend in my knees, and then adjusting the padding to my hips after I have that positioning, I get full contact in my lower back and it pretty much restricts as much contact from my hamstrings and glutes as much as possible, which is what I want when I'm trying to target my lower back. So if you're somebody who also has that issue, you guys could try that out if you would like, but do not feel like you need to be in this position. If the other normal positioning works well for you, then just stick with that. I did just want um, to point out why I personally do that. And also again, making sure to keep your spine neutral and your back as flat as possible throughout this movement and going up to peak tension and then lowering back down. And then moving into another staple key exercise when it comes to training your back, you're gonna start off with having really good posture, chest upright, shoulders back, Grab the weight as you're pulling it in towards you. You're keeping your elbows in close to your body, squeezing your lats together like you're pinching something between your shoulder blades. And then as you release that weight forward, you're keeping your shoulders upright and your chest upright still, but you're allowing it to kind of pull you forward to get that full stretch in your lat. And then you're going to bring the weight back in and repeat for three sets of 15 reps each. And once you complete that exercise, we'll get into the last one before the burnout, which is going to be wide grip and then close grip bent over rows, starting off with the wide grip rows. So using a barbell and whichever weight added you would like, you're going to be in the same position um, as far as your actual body as we were with the dumbbell bent over rows. And then you're going to do an overhand grip outside shoulder width, as you guys can see, letting that weight hang in front of you. And then as you pull it up towards your torso, you are going to make sure you are squeezing and contracting your back. It'll typically end up in fall. It should be right around your lower rib cage, give or take, depending on your body structure, but typically around that area is where you want to be pulling it up at. Then I will drop the weight, readjust myself, and then go right back into the same positioning, but then do an underhand grip to where my hands are shoulder width apart, keeping that weight as close to my body as possible, pulling it in towards my torso keeping my elbows in, squeezing my back, and your hands should be as far apart as when you pull that weight up, they end up by your sides. And that is it for that exercise. And for the burnout, if you feel up to it, you don't have to do the burnout per se, but if you feel like you can, you definitely should. You'll be happy you did it after. So I decided to do some burpees with the BOSU ball, three sets, 10 reps each, and then you are done. Really hope you guys enjoyed this workout. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until the next one, bye guys.